bush outside of Kirikiri, which is in the far north of the North Island. And over there is a weta. Come and have a look. <gasps> oh, no, 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 don't be scared. They look like creepy crawly beasties, but they're really cool. Come on, come and have a look with me. <gasps> Hang on, it's gone. It must have heard me coming. But wait a minute, how do wetters hear? Hmm? Well, the ears, the ears, there might be a little hole um, near the antennas. The ears, ears. Uh, with the spheres, but it's nice. Ears, with the feelers, by ears. Hmm. Well, yes, I think ears would be a very good place to start. Of course, we have great big floppy ears on the sides of our heads. Well, when I said big, I didn't mean really big. I mean actually reasonably sized and, and very attractive. Just here. So let's have a look for wetter ears. But first of all, I've got to find me a wetter. Guess what I've got? I've got a cave wetter. And cave wetters are called cave wetters because they love to live in trees. <laughs> Just kidding. Cave wetters love really dark places. So you'll often find them in caves, but you can also find them in dark places in your garden. Cave wetters love to jump too. So that's why this one is in a plastic container. So it stays here and doesn't jump all over the place. Oh, and that's why I'm talking quietly, because I don't want to give this cave wetter a fright. If you give them a fright, they jump. Ooh, we are lucky though that it's not a tusked wetter. When a tusked wetter gets a fright, it does a really bad smelling poo to scare whatever is there away. Oh no, there must be a tusked wetter around here somewhere. Well, I guess that answers the question of why a wetter would have ears. It's to hear predators approaching. And predators are other animals that would like to eat you. Hmm. So if a wetter is going to hear, it's going to have to have ears. But where? OK, let's think about it. If I were a wetter, where would I want my ears to be? I know. Follow me. Uh, no. <whistles> down here? Here I am, down on the ground, just where a wetter would be. And there'd be no point having ears in here because the sorts of things that would eat me would be more pork and rats. Actually, rats are big problems for wetter. Okay, now they're bigger than me, so they'd be coming in from above. What I really need is ears sticking up so I can hear those predators approaching. Which part of me sticks up the most, huh? Ha ha ha! But if I were a wetter, yeah, if I was a wetter, it would be my legs, all the joins of my legs that stick up in the air. And it turns out that that's where a wetter's ears are. See those little circles there? Just under the knees. I'm trying to figure out how it works, but it's very difficult because a wetter is built differently to me. They can lie on their front and still have their ears up in the air above them. No, I'm not even going to try that one. Now, we're not completely sure why a wetter has its ears up here, off the ground and in the air, but I guess it's got to help. And there's a very good reason why they have one ear on each knee. Have you ever wondered why we have two ears? Why not have one? One up here, just above your nose. Space, the final frontier. Final front ear. Get it? Of course, if you didn't have an ear on either side of your head, it would be really difficult to keep your glasses on. But there really is a more important reason. When you have two ears spaced apart, listening to the same sound, they hear it a little bit differently. And your brain collects the information that those two ears are collecting, and then it uses that information to figure out where the sound is coming from. Let me show you. You take these keys here, Come back! There, that's better. You take the keys and I'll put a blindfold on. I'll get you to jingle the keys 
and I'll use my two ears to figure out where they are. Okay, the sound's coming from here. Hey, got them! Cool! Well, let's try that again. Ready when you are. Hmm, the sound is coming from over here. Ha! Got them! Oh, well, now that wasn't easy, but it would have been nearly impossible if I didn't have both ears working. Here's our friend the wetter again. See how the ears on its two front legs are set apart? Oh, that really helps it to figure out where a sound is coming from. In fact, even when it's completely dark, a wetter can turn to face where a sound is coming from. I'll show you. Lights out. Cooey, wetter, over here. Wow, it turned to face me. Did you see that? No? Okay, lights on. It really did turn to face me. Honest. Remember before when those ears very rudely appeared on my backside? Yes, yes, all right, all right. Well, a funny thing is that as well as ears on their knees, wetters actually do have ears on their backsides. Well, I guess to call them ears is going a little bit too far. Well, there they are there. They're called cirque, and they're actually more like little feelers than ears, but they can detect sounds and vibrations that might be caused by some tricky predator creeping up from behind. There are about a hundred different species or types of wetter in New Zealand, and each of them have their own interesting habits. And when it comes to listening with their backsides, none are more interesting than the tree wetters. Now, tree wetters like to live in holes in, well, trees actually. They bury themselves in their holes with only their backsides hanging out. And then with their cirque, they listen out for the things that are going on around them. You know, I'd really like to demonstrate this bury yourself in a hole with only your backside hanging out. But I believe we've got pictures of that already. We don't have pictures? Oh, right. Hey. I've got a better idea. Let me introduce Wayne the Stunt Wetter. Wayne's going to wander up into his hole. In you go, Wayne. That's right. Here he is, settled in, with only his cirque hanging out the end, listening for what's going on outside. You know, wetter experts actually say that wetters can detect the weather with their cirque. What's that, Wayne? Oh, cold southerly with some showers, clearing Tuesday. Hmm, funny that. I would have thought it would have been wetter. Get it? Wetter? <laughs> <laughs> so wetters use hearing for the really important job of listening for predators, other animals who would love to have them for dinner. And most wetters hear using very simple ears on their knees and even more simple bits on their backsides that can detect sound vibrations. Hey, why did you see how good you are at using your ears to detect where sounds are coming from by closing your eyes and having somebody jingle keys nearby? See if you can work out where the sounds are coming from and how close you can get to grabbing them. If you'd like information about this program, or if you have questions you'd like answered, you can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307, Birkenhead, Auckland, or head to the website, www.susie.co.nz. OK, little buddy, if I let you go, I want you to have a word with your cousin, the old tusked wetter. We don't want any more of that funny business, OK? Oh no, too late. Oh, see you next time. Ka kite. Of course, if you didn't have an ear on either side of your head, it would be really hard to keep your glasses on. <laughs> Oops. Have you ever wondered why you have two ears? A wetter has one on each knee, and we have two ears too. This program was brought to you by New Zealand On Air.